Well, hello folks, my name is Tim, and uh, you may have uh, seen some of my online uh, DIY videos, uh, most specifically uh, some of my cassette ones, and I actually had somebody go on my YouTube channel and uh, uh, make a query. I'd made a bunch of DIY uh, how you fix and repair cassettes, and somebody was uh, interested if I uh, did anything on the CD, compact disc side, and uh, Fact is, yes, I do, because I have quite a substantial compact disc collection, as well as um, record collection and uh, and cassette collection. And I'm a bit of a I like analog, digital. I'm I'm not that fussy. Uh, I listen to everything. And uh, one of the questions that person had was, um, he has uh, like cassettes where you have uh, cassette tapes where you don't have the uh, the uh, J cards for them. Uh, I showed a way of uh, actually uh, reprinting them and making uh, cassettes look like almost new if you've got the original cassette but you're missing the uh, the J card inserts on the uh, the cases. And uh, so likewise with uh, compact discs, um, you can see I've got a whole stack of uh, discs here that uh, these are all crappy discs so I'm not really concerned about how I handle them um, <clears throat> except for this one. I like that one. Um, so, uh, what, what do you do when you've got a nice CD, say you've got a whole bunch of sleeves that you had in a car, but then you lose the, uh, the jewel cases with the, uh, the inserts on them. And I've got an easy mend for that. It's a DIY solution, again. And uh, for this, uh, what you need, of course, is the original compact disc. And you need some blank uh, CDs, which you can get online, or if you have some crappy CDs that you don't like, you can rob the jewel cases from them and, and use those as uh, uh, donor cases for the uh, uh, jewel case for the CD that you uh, are missing a, a jewel case and liner notes for. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a CD that I have a liner, uh, uh, proper uh, inserts for the, uh, the jewel cases and everything. So as you can see, we've got Fleetwood Mac Rumors with a nice uh, CD inside. And uh, what we'll do is take that CD out. And if we pop the, uh, the jewel case off, you can see the you have the backing liner for the, uh, the jewel case, which is there, which has the songs and all that sort of stuff, plus the, uh, the two spine uh, tabs uh, that are folded out. And then, of course, you have the... <coughs> the insert liner and uh, this is the little this this one particular one is in booklet form I normally don't reproduce the whole booklet although you can if you decide to uh, for me I just like to have it so I can see it on the shelf and see what disc it is um, but you can also reproduce that and as you can see uh, both of these fit just perfectly on an eight and a half uh, inch sheet of paper so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go online, show a method of going online uh, using Discogs because uh, they've got a huge database of, uh, of uh, artwork and uh, graphics for both cassettes, albums, or you know albums and also compact discs, and uh, I think maybe even eight track as well. Who knows? Never uh, really dabbled in eight track, so I don't know. Um, so as you can see, you can actually reproduce this. You can, even, you know, in this case, I could scan it and reprint it and have a perfect liner or, or anything. But what do you do when you don't actually have these spines here or these inserts for the, uh, the jewel case? So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go online and uh, I'm going to do a screen capture off my computer. I usually use um, a Microsoft Publisher just because... Uh, it's a WYSIWYG, or what you see is what you get kind of graphics solution. So you can actually just start with an eight and a half blank sheet of paper. Then what you want to know, of course, are your dimensions so you can scale it appropriately. And in this case, it's about four and three quarter inches that way and uh, high or tall, I guess, and about four and three quarters. So it's basically square. So it's four, a little less than four and three quarters by four and three quarters here. And then this one is, uh, at the longest uh, measurement, is six, uh, five and uh, seven eighths. 
and you can do this metric as well if you if you so choose and just uh, uh, eight, uh, eight. so it's uh, four and nine sixteenths this way so as long as you know those what you can do you can do is build a build a, a box basically and then what you're going to do is copy and paste the graphic and make sure it's sized to fit the exact dimensions of the inside of the case and the back side of the case. So all you're doing is reproducing this uh, geometrically um, on your sheet when you're doing it. I've got it made a template so I don't have to do all of these measurements. I've just got uh, one sheet that I have uh, saved and then uh, what I do is I just superimpose the graphic over it and scale it to the proper size for both the uh, front and the back of the uh, CD jewel case. So we'll do that. We'll make a, a nice copy and I'll show you how darn good it looks, you know, compared to the original. Uh, so we'll go to the computer and show you that part. Well, here we are back again. I have uh, had to record this a second time uh, after I did all the other uh, video uh, stuff because I'd done one long video explaining how to do all of this and found out that the uh, my screen capture software here doesn't follow me when I'm opening up different windows and, and different applications. So I'm going to have to do this sort of one application at a time. In this case, the browser part first. doesn't matter what browser you're using. In this case, it's uh, I'm using Google Chrome. You can use, uh, you know, if you're an, uh, an, uh, an Apple guy, you can use their, their native uh, um, web browser or you can use uh, Edge or whatever. Anyway, uh, we're just going to go to... Uh, the Discogs website and that pops up pretty quick because I've been there many times and what we're going to do is search for the CD title that uh, we're trying to find a uh, front cover back cover and, uh, and liner notes for uh, so in this case it was Fleetwood Mac rumors that I used as my sample CD and instead of just typing what well, I could just type Fleetwood Mac rumors here and type CD so that only the compact disc options come up. Or what I do is I just use the uh, the code that's on the spine of the uh, the CD, which is the I think it's Warner Brothers for this one, which is W2 3010, and then I hit enter, <clears throat> and then you'll see that uh, there's a number of options that come up, and you'll see that other CDs have that same code, um, so it's not unique to Fleetwood Mac Rumors because it's so small. And uh, what I do know about this uh, on the liner notes, it says it's a Canadian, it's made in Scarborough, Ontario. So we want the Canadian version, not a US or Japanese or whatever. So we're going to search by country. And it gives me four or so titles here. I know that this one actually, I clicked on this one, it doesn't actually have the graphics embedded. But uh, of the four here, this is the best one. So you can pop in and look at what they what options they have. But in this case, you click on the rumors title here, and then you'll see this underneath the graphic. You'll see the uh, it has all the track listings, the uh, the information on the recording itself, where the uh, the country of that CD is, etc. And then the uh, this is your label code right here, which is W2 3010, which is what I used to find it. And uh, underneath this graphic here, you can see this uh, more images tab. So we're going to click on that, and now you can actually see uh, somebody is along with the uh, CD information has also um, uh, scanned the uh, title page, the back page, which you can see here, because it's got the, uh, the spine uh, codes here and uh, labels, and also a scan of the actual CD itself, and then also the booklet that's attached to the back um, the front cover. Uh, this is all sort of wrapped together as one booklet. I myself don't bother with the booklet, although if uh, you're a little bit more anal than I am, you can actually print these all out to scale and then uh, bind them together, and that'll be your front uh, front cover. And then you also have the back cover here, which is uh, <coughs> shown there. So uh, once you do, once you get to this stage, what you're going to do, and I've got to actually stop the recording once I capture the uh, um, the front cover. Uh, I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to open up Microsoft Publisher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, copy these over 
and then I'm going to start another recording so you can actually see what I'm doing in Publisher. Because if I open up Publisher here, this it stays in the background and you won't actually see it. So uh, what I'll do is I'll copy. So if you right click here, and I'm not sure if this uh, dialog comes up when you right click it, but there is a uh, an option to say copy image, and that'll put it put it into your uh, uh, copy in the uh, the background. So you copy that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the recording here and I'm going to start it in Microsoft Publisher. Okay, now we're uh, back into, now I've opened up Publisher. This is the, uh, the opening screen. So uh, I can either choose to uh, create a new uh, blank uh, page, or in this case, there's a list of uh, previous uh, Publisher documents that I've created. Uh, in this list and that usually shows the most recent or you can just open from a location where you know uh, where that was using this open dialog. So in this case I made a uh, CD jewel case cover template uh, document. So instead of making the, bl the blank and going through all of that, I'll, you, you'll see quickly what I mean. Uh, here's the template that I created. So I've now opened that up and you see the uh, this one actually has a bunch of uh, back covers superimposed on it. And I just randomly picked a few uh, uh, covers to use. Um, one is the front cover and the other is the back cover. And they're, they're scaled to size. So the first, um, when I was in the other application in the website on Discogs, I copied the, uh, the front cover. So I'm going to just go paste here. And that now pastes that in. And what I can do is line that up the top left corner. And it looks like it's a little, there we go, a little higher. And then what I do is I'll scale this down smaller than the, uh, the backing uh, template. And now what it'll do, I'll do is I'll scale this to uh, the exact dimensions of that jewel case. It's uh, ironic that I used a jewel. Uh, album as a jewel case uh, template. Anyway, this one was, uh, I think, a Britney Spears for, that I made for somebody. Okay, so I'm going to go back to, and you're not going to see this when I go back to my, uh, um, when I go back to my browser in Discogs, and I'm going to uh, go to that back page. I'm going to copy that. And I don't believe you're going to see this, so now I'm back into the uh, publisher. And I'm going to paste that in. And again, I'm going to line up the top left corner and top left side. And then we're going to downsize it. And then I'm going to size it back up to the actual size of the graphic. And then I can drag one dimension there and just make sure it properly lines up. I can actually make it bigger here so you can tell if it's lining up properly. So let's do that again. And there we go. So now I have uh, both the front cover. This one needs to go a little bit more over. Uh, <clears throat> to scale for the front cover and the back cover. And then because this has got a white backing and it's a white cover, what I'll do is I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to select the graphic. I'm going to go format picture and then I'm going to go colors and lines and I'm going to actually embed a uh, black line around the perimeter of the uh, the graphic. That makes it easy to use a pair of scissors and cut it out straight. So you don't want to be wandering off if you can't tell the difference between the white here and the white of your paper. Same idea with this one. I've got an edge here that's, if you look at it, that's white on white. So I'm going to actually put a uh, black uh, border around it. Oops, and there we go. And there we are. It's all to scale, ready to print. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to print it out on the uh, printer uh, just by going File, uh, Print. And then here's where you want to go into your printer properties. And if it's set at standard or draft, you want to actually either go high. I always go more, more settings. And I drag the quality right up there so that you're making a really high quality print. Um, and you'll see that uh, the, the paper that I have here is not that great. I, I just got uh, recycled paper right now. I have I usually use a high bond, heavy bond, uh, very white paper. 
Uh, it's a little more expensive than the uh, other paper if you're just you know printing lots of things to read. Uh, for doing graphics, you want a really good quality paper so that they print out really they really pop when they print out. I won't be able to show you that because I don't have really good high quality paper uh, right now. I got to go and buy some. So here we go, and then you print it. I'm not going to print it here because we'll pick up where I my other video left off. And there you have it. Uh, there's your template on an eight and a half inch sheet, eight and a half uh, by eleven uh, sheet, and uh, ready to go. I didn't have any paper, so the print job uh, stalled. So I put some new paper in it. Now this is only uh, really low grade paper, so I usually use a nice shiny gloss very very white paper so this is not going to turn out as as ideal I got to go get some more uh, really good uh, good cardstock uh, or heavy bond uh, pure white paper uh, this is recycled so it's kind of gritty uh, it's not great paper but it'll do it'll it's enough to show you what to do so we'll push uh, print and uh, see the print job ha happening here And because I printed it out on high quality, it's going to be really, really slow in printing. And these Mega Tank printers are really good because I've been using this for about seven or eight months and I do a lot of printing and I'm only down to about two thirds or three quarters of a tank of, on each of the, uh, the colors and the black uh, ink, as you can see. So uh, these Mega Tank printers are really a big savings in, uh, in, in ink costs, especially if you're doing a lot of things like that. I've made a lot of uh, cassette um, covers and some of them you can't even tell. Like here's one. You can see this one's a little, this was on uh, low grade quality, but that was the original. That's a uh, copy. And in my database I note which ones have actually a copy and which ones are original. So you can see how it turns out. It turns out really nice, eh? Very slow printing, but uh, very high quality. But it it also depends on the quality of the uh, the scan that's in Discogs. So um, you're going to have to um, go through the uh, options there and pick the the ones with the best graphics. And there you have it. Now you've got a printed out sheet of the uh, spine and the uh, the back uh, label for the. Uh, compact disc that I'm trying to uh, make the inserts for and we'll go back to our uh, shop here and show you how I fit them into the CD jewel case. Okay now we're back after uh, doing the printing and here you go um, and the graphic that I picked uh, it was a little less yellow and, and again it's a very 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 grainy poor quality uh, draft uh, recycled paper so I didn't get the smooth and it would actually come out much better if uh, if I had a you know did a better uh, paper on this and also po possibly a laser jet so this is actually one of the poorer quality ones that have, have turned out but hey that's all I've got here in the house right now so got to get myself some good uh, quality heavy bond uh, paper uh, I just used up my last batch. So now what we do, um, if you have one of those cutters, you can do use those. I have one, but I find it's easy. I can just do it, you know, for these short lengths, I can cut it just as well in scissors. So, and then and then heavy cardstock as well. This is flimsy paper, so obviously it's not going to be as stiff as uh, as these papers. So with heavy cardstock with pure white it'll it'll be nice and uh, and rigid so uh, that's another reason with going going with better quality paper now you just cut along those lines that I, those box lines that I put on you can actually when you cut it you can't see them anymore if you cut it properly and you do that
A lot of times with darker covers, you don't have to do those lines, but uh, with white sort of covered uh, ones, you do. I find it works better. Put the box around it. And almost done here. I'm doing this quick, quickly, I do it more carefully usually. Okay, and then what I do is I get a steel ruler. Uh, these are the cat's meow for this. And what you do is you see the lines here, the, uh, the spine uh, labels here. And I line those up and then I just make the bend using the edge of a steel ruler. And same with this one. Find the uh, line just above it, and we can make that. So it's now you can take the jewel case. I picked one with uh, the uh, little things here are broken off, but uh, I got a bunch more over there. I can take one of those instead. Yeah, that's a better one. So we'll take the spine of that. Make sure it goes in properly, and you can see how it perf fits perfectly. And you can put your CD holder part in, click it, and then uh, in your front cover, and there you have it. One jewel case. For your collection, uh, until you can find a you know a, a, a good quality uh, replacement, which are difficult to do because people don't want to throw away their CDs to give you a, a nice uh, jewel case insert or liner notes. And look what you got something that would be uh, well represented on your uh, your bookshelf for your CD collection. So uh, that's a quick and dirty way of. Uh, making a jewel case and uh, liner notes and uh, cover uh, for your CD. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comments below on YouTube here, and I would be more than happy to uh, um, answer any questions you might have. There's different ways of doing this. This is not the only way, of course. There's different software you can get out there. Um, I, I just use what I have handy on my computer, and you know, um, this works for me. So uh, hopefully it helps you out. Thank you very much for watching.